welcome everybody. Thank you so much for your introductions. Um, as Winnie said, I'm Frank Simolis, a collaborator with Val, a partner in the law firm of Squire Patton Boggs. Uh, I have a lot of experience in trade agreements, free trade agreements. I've represented a number of countries in their negotiation of a free trade agreement. So I've represented Peru, uh, Colombia, and Korea. Uh, also work with African countries on trade preference programs and am very excited about the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. From your brief introductions, it sounds like you all can benefit greatly from the AFCFTA. They basically are involved in merchandise, merchandise crossing borders, which means they uh, typically will face tariff barriers and non-tariff barriers. Those can all be eliminated or ameliorated through this African Continental Free Trade Agreement. What it does in short is create one African common market. And in that sense, it's similar to uh, the European Union or the old European common market. Uh, uh, Frank, one second, please. Can somebody mute? It looks like there's a noise coming from one somebody somewhere. Can you please mute? Yeah. Yes, and Thank Frank, you. can you tell me if you want me to move to number two or do you want to control the slide? Uh, yeah, I'll just tell you when to move. Okay, let me, okay. Let me see if I can. Okay. Yeah, can everybody me... mute, please? Uh -huh. Good, thank you. Great, thank you. So uh, a lot of opportunities with this AFCTA. It's going to create one large African market and therefore it's going to boost the continent's collective economic standing and its negotiating power with other trading partners around the world. It is the flagship project of the African Union's Agenda 2063. When it eliminates barriers to trade within Africa, it's going to really boost intra-Africa trade for all merchandise, but particularly value-added products, which is what you folks are involved in from what you said in your introductory remarks, and it'll increase trade across all sectors uh, of the African economy, including, by the way, digital trade. Uh, right now, 54 members have signed the AFCTA agreement. The AFCTA has 44 state parties uh, as of December 2022. It has to the potential to boost intra-Africa trade. These are the latest estimates by 52.3% simply by eliminating import duties and can double that uh, increase if non-tariff barriers are also reduced. There's a secretariat for the AFCTA based in Ghana. They anticipate that the AFCTA will reduce extreme poverty and produce a 7% income boost for Africa by 2023, that is next year. Uh, it's expected the agreement to expand the size of Africa's economy to $29 trillion by 2050. So a huge opportunity in the operation of AFCTA. If you can go now to the customs slide, AFCTA and customs, which is the next slide. We don't have time to go into detail in this introductory session, but I will just summarize briefly. Here I talk about some of the annexes to the agreement, annexes three and four, basically, in simple terms, what that does is promote what we call trade facilitation through simple customs paperwork. It's going to simplify customs procedures. It's going to harmonize procedures uh, between African countries. It will automate customs uh, information and operations and also facilitate uh, the exchange of information. There's another annex, Annex 8. It, promotes transit of trade through customs management. It'll grant all uh, traffic freedom to traverse through territories. It will improve licensing requirements, and it's going to give exemptions from customs examination and charges. So for those of you that mentioned products, whether it's jewelry or food products, whatever, uh, this has the potential to benefit you. There's a wonderful, uh, guidebook that's been created by the AFCTA secretariat. Uh, it's called the AFCTA e-tariff book. It's pictured here to the right. It provides a lot of information on the tariff rates that will be in effect through AFCTA. And it also 
talks about rules of origin requirements. From your brief introductions, it sounds like that should not be a problem for your products, but I would encourage you to take a close look at that e-tariff book. And perhaps now in our longer session, we can go into greater detail about what that handbook does and how individual companies and sectors like yours are gonna benefit from AFCTA. The final slide, uh, Val, if you can move to that uh, before I turn it over to Al, uh, Val, is why you should care about the AFCTA. First of all, it's the largest global free trade area by countries participating, and it can radically transform the economic process, prospects. It's gonna diversify exports. It's going to accelerate growth. It will competitively integrate the regions into the global economy. By that, it's gonna increase foreign direct investment, increase employment, and basically broaden economic inclusion. Here's an interesting uh, prediction from the Mo Ibrahim Foundation, which you may have heard of. If AFCTA is successfully implemented, it can generate a combined consumer and business spending of 6.7 trillion by 2030. That's simply because there's going to be easier trade uh, between borders and among participating countries. <clears throat> the countries involved are going to progressively eliminate duties they're gonna apply preferential tariffs to imports from other state parties. And if state parties are a part of a regional trade agreement like SADC or ECOWAS that have preferential tariffs already in place, state parties can maintain and improve on them. By eliminating tariffs, and open, it will also open up trading activities to small businesses. It sounds like some of you participating here would qualify as small businesses in the regional markets. By the way, small and medium businesses make up 80% of the region's uh, businesses. Increased trading also facilitates business products traded as inputs for larger enterprises. It'll foster competitive manufacturing. Another uh, estimate here is with successful implementation, there's the potential for Africa's manufacturing sector to double in size from 500 billion in 2015 to a trillion in 2025, creating an estimated 14 million jobs. So my last point and the last slide, Val, if you can move to the next one, how can African businesses participate? Um, we expect this agreement to reshape uh, companies and countries in the region. It'll create new industries and the expansion of key sectors and African businesses can have a role in shaping these changes to the AFCTA once it's implemented. What you'll need to do is to continue to advocate for the active support of African governments, regional and continental institutions and development partners as implementation moves forward. That going to include things like exchanging your views and addressing potential bottlenecks that you may have with your products uh, going through the implementation of AFCTA. Also, you can encourage African countries that haven't yet ratified the agreement to do so. That's gonna help you in additional markets within Africa. Encouraging co African countries to effectively implement the AFCTA so trading can actually start under the preferential arrangements. And finally, identifying opportunities for uh, markets and value chain integration. So there's a role for you to play in helping to facilitate and improve and expand the AFCTA, which for you and your own interests, bottom line, it's gonna help you in terms of additional sales. Some of the potential priority products under inter-African trade range from dairy, to agro-processed foods, somebody mentioned pineapples, it includes cereal, sugar, cocoa products, textiles, cosmetics, jewelry, and others. It's going to harmonize the regulatory framework, open up the services sector, which we haven't talked about for more trade, that will boost um, African services like transport, logistics, technology, financial services, all of those will benefit. It's critical to have a deep understanding of this agreement, especially the rules of origin. You need to understand that carefully if your product is gonna benefit under AFCTA. 
the certification requirements that are spelled out. You can look at that in the e-tariff book, the licensing requirements, uh, modalities for liberalization of trade and goods. Finally, you should seek out and participate in business associations, trade fairs, trade exhibits, conferences, uh, something like the Intra-African Trade Fair. That's one example, but all of those fairs are great opportunities for you, number one, to promote your products and their eligibility under AFCTA and to exchange information with other businesses and associations where you might be able to benefit from their participation in the AFCTA. Uh, I've gone beyond, uh, it's already uh, well past a half hour, so Val, I'm gonna turn it over to you. You're on mute. Thank you, Frank. That was wonderful. You've been very concise and straight to the point. And I want to just jump in quickly to uh, let me pull up my slide. Um, when we, we could do the Q&A later, so I'm sure you have questions for Frank and for me. So let me do my side. And uh, let's see, how do I switch screen share? Mm. Okay, I see it here. Let me. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so, um, quickly, we're going to um, continue with number five, I hope you all got, I think some people joined us, Amelia, Gabriel, I hope you're here because I know you were the first to sign up for this. Um, Winnie, is Gabriel here? Because we didn't give him an opportunity to talk. Lady, lady, are you coming back in? Okay, uh, Winnie, is Hi, Gabriel, Val. yes, is I, Gabriel here? I think he dropped, he's dropped off the call. Oh, Probably because internet. he was trying to talk and couldn't. How do we get him back in? I'll, I'm, I'm reaching out to him via WhatsApp. Yeah, please do. And Amelia just joined us. Amelia. 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 Somebody called Amelia joined us. Is she still there? Anyway. Um, yes, she's on the call. Yes, Emilia, um, you, we introduced, you came in late. Everybody introduced themselves. Do you know what trade she does? Is she in uh, Agric? Hi, Emilia, please, what um, trade do you do? If you can unmute yourself, if not, okay. you can type please, it in the chat. Please, please, if you can reach out to Gabriel. I felt bad we couldn't hear him and he, he left. Okay. Please. Yeah, so quickly, um, in the interest of saving time, yeah, please, if you can reach out to him. It's, it's one of, is he in Ghana? Gabriel is in Ghana, right? Yes, please, he's in Ghana. Yeah, please, please try and reach out if you can come back in, because this is so important for him and for everybody. So quickly, um, I'm going to continue. Why does AFCFTA focus on SMEs? I've, we listen to everybody, and it looks like, broadly speaking, uh, uh, most of you are SMEs, small medium enterprises. You're also in the agri sector and also jewelry industry. There's, uh, of course, the artists, creative, and uh, food processing, farm. They're mostly, and then shoemaker. But most of most of you are in the farm agri sector, agri business, and um, you know, yeah. So that's wonderful. You all fit in within this rubric of the stakeholders that uh, the AFCFTA will actually benefit, uh, you know, and I tailored to, um, you know, help to be more productive. Now, why? Why should you be involved in this training and why is it critical for you to jump in now, right? Because small, medium enterprises, you comprise 80% of the workforce in most of Africa, be it North, South, East, West Africa. I think from the statistics, from the uh, spreadsheets that um, Jose sent to us, most of you are from uh, West and uh, a few from Southern and then a few from East. Uh, we didn't have many from Northern, but uh, regardless, AFCFTA affects, like Frank rightly said, 
54 nations have signed, right? Now, one thing I I got from the list we received, uh, most of you are small, at the S of the small medium enterprise. Somebody's coming back in, a new person, Tansy, okay. We don't see Gabriel, but that's fine. Having said that, there's also statistics that 98% of SMEs hire more than um, um, less than 10 employees, only 2% hires more than 10. So there's a fragility issue in terms of scaling up for most of you, okay? Because for instance, I, I, I think I listened, was it Lady or some of you mentioned you want to have access to markets, okay? And also, um, of course, we're giving you the access to business, trade, or more people are coming in, access to business, trade, legal knowledge, some of you that are coming in now, maybe during the Q&A, you can tell us who you are and then we can sort of roll in, you know, get information on what your, the nature of your business is. But um, yeah, so welcome as you're uh, strolling in. So basically, why is it important for you to, in terms of access to finance, access to market, and then we're giving you this access to business, trade, legal knowledge, because sometimes when you want to have access to markets and you get that access, you may have a scaling up issue, you see, in terms, but when we start to interact with you, you can disclose that a little bit because I noticed that some of you are LLCs, some of you are um, sole proprietorships. So you have that, you're registered. Most of, there's no informal uh, problem in terms of not being registered, right? So uh, the fragility question we can address um, later as during our um, Q&A. Now, the AFCFTA also encourages inclusivity and capacity building. Articles 3, Articles 5, Articles 3, the list goes on. So there is finance out there. There's money to help you, right, to, to scale up. The question is being able to access. Frank already gave you this. We can disclose that later, more information on links, how you can have access to where to go. There's the etariff.au-afcfta.org, okay? Now, let me quickly scroll through uh, my slides. This is why does AFCFTA focus on uh, SMEs? I already gave you that in terms of statistics, very, very important for economic development in all of Africa and wealth creation because SMEs comprise the bulk of the workforce, right? But there's a fragility question, right? Um, and the good news, the Secretariat is in Ghana, is in West Africa, and they're moving forward with quite a lot of stuff. How many countries are trading? Right now, we have 54, as Frank mentioned, that have signed, right? About 40 plus have ratified, meaning they now agreed it's the law, it's a treaty. Now they need to now domesticate for it to really fully be implemented then the process of doing that rules of origin have been done. I want to sort of simplify everything, right? So that you can understand what we're saying. We don't want to speak like above your head, so to speak. So how does that affect you? Don't be fooled by some of the stuff we've put in here in terms of countries that have developed and validated the AFCFTA national implementation strategies. Seven countries are, are now trading, believe it or not. Other countries that are not trading, if your country is not listed, don't be too concerned because countries like Nigeria that are not yet trading, they allow, if, you're, if you want to trade, you can start, right? But the thing is that officially, these are the countries because the uh, guide, it's called the Guided Trade Initiative that the Africa Continental Free Trade Area has put in Orusu. Is that Gabriel? Gabriel just came back in, right? Gabriel, hello? Winnie, that's Gabriel, right? Hello, Winnie, you're muted. Hello? Hello, Val, can you hear me now? Sorry. Yes, I think Gabriel just came back in. Um, yes, he's back. He's back, but he's trying to to um to talk. To connect his audio. His audio is not oh, connected. Oh. Um, we have 17 people about, so that's good. I mean, we have it's it's good. So Gabriel, please, if you can't hear us. You can put your information in the chat room when we start um, interacting. This is a very important masterclass. So we want everybody to gain from this. SMEs, you are all very critical to the AFCFTA process working. 
very critical. My partner and I, Frank, can help you beyond the stage as to next steps, okay? In terms of access to finance, access to markets, and of course, OSE is very critical on the ground, access to finance. We're giving you that knowledge. Knowledge is power, more money in your pocket. So like I was saying, seven countries, Ghana, Rwanda, Cameroon, Kenya, Egypt, Mauritius, and Tanzania, they are now trading so that if you're from those countries, you can jump in. But the countries that are not trading, they are in the process. Some people are trading, but officially, these four countries, the fact that your country is not included does not mean you cannot trade within that rubric of the AFCFTA and the duty-free. The whole point of duty-free and tariffs means that now, hey, if you have your pineapples, your spices, you want to export, you're from Ghana or from Cote d'Ivoire or you're from uh, Kenya or Nigeria or wherever you are, not Southeast West Africa, you can export to other fellow African countries without incurring uh, high tariffs or duties. A duty, you know, your duty, you have certain levels of preferential treatment. That's what it's called, right? So you don't pay the same. So you don't want to cross the border and somebody will be, the customs people will be telling you, oh, you have to pay. So you have to know what the rules of, of the game are for you, right? So that, because that means more money in your pocket, more people are coming, that's, that's nice. This is African time. <laughs> That's wonderful. So, um, so basically, like I said, even though those countries, 46 uh, countries have submitted tariff offers. Tariff means how much are you paying? You know, traders, you're, you're making shoes. You now want to export to other countries. What are the rules of the game for your country and another country? This is why African continental free trade area was, uh, came into being, so that Africans can trade with each other without incurring all these bottlenecks, you know, taxes, you know, traders that want to export to another country will not pay the, the uh, you know, tax or tariffs, or they pay very minimal, you know, as long as it's value added. And you don't have that problem because you're all dealing with primary products that you're turning into finished products. That is exceptional. You know, the question is getting that information so your business can, you know, move up to the next level, you know, and I was pleasantly happy to see most of you already registered. So you're not having the informality issue, right? So in terms of, I put in a few websites here, but you see, like I said, we're willing to and able to help you go to the next level. This is just our first part of masterclass, okay? Because we, you know, we have, uh, you know, the ability to do so. Now we're going to have the Q&A and then we'll follow up a little bit. Okay, next slide. Um, this is showing. Okay. Now, this is very important. How can your business become economically viable, right? How, you know, within that framework of AFCFTA? We're not going to be discussing with you because, unless there's some of you that have formality issues that you're still facing, but it sounds like most of you have moved beyond that. You're, red, you're registered, you have LLCs, you have sole proprietorships, and all. A sole proprietorship might have some bottlenecks in terms of fragility, but we'll talk about that later. If you're an LLC, good, but then there's, like I said, in terms of scaling up, if you want to export, you will need to engage in a number of, you know, discussions as to the best option for your business, you know, and I want to ask you all, when we start talking, how many employees, I know we filled it out and uh, we needed such an awesome job. Jose, Jose, they sent us the questionnaires, the answers that you gave. So it sounds like the size of business is, is really quite, pretty small. So there's some options, M&A, measures acquisitions. There's also consolidation. There's franchising, you know. And also, I noticed a lot of you did not have yes on um, IP, especially if you're on the food industry, there's an issue of whether or not you want to register your trade secret, right? Trade secret will enable your product to become more viable, to become more economically valuable, right? So there are various forms of financing too for economic viability. There are many channels to getting economically viable, okay? Loans, equity, grants, blended finance, you know, um, 
I mentioned earlier, the nature of your business can impact it. If you're a sole proprietorship, you might want to switch to an LLC. The advantages of LLC, we could discuss that further in part two, right? So forms of business, from those who haven't formalized, and I think the good news, most of you have formalized, government gives benefit, but there's a, you know, we're also working with government to make sure they provide the fringe benefits. They don't, they create an enabling environment to enable you to be able to progress. They don't overtax you. They give you fringe benefits. You know, if you're selling products, I think a, a lady said she does spices. Who does food? Pris uh, Priscilla, somebody does food, produces food. Uh, if it's a retailer, I'm looking through the list here, most of you do food. If it's like, if you're doing retail in terms of farming, if you're doing even the shoe, the person who might, whatever you're doing, there are benefits you can get from the government. International bodies within the US, England and everywhere, they're working with governments too. African governments, AFCFTA member nations to make sure that they create an enabling environment for businesses to boom, be it reduced, um, electricity, energy for you to produce your product, be it, you know, and we'll be talking about the special economic zones in part two. We will be giving you tips on how to capitalize on them too. And everything we've said, if you need more help in terms of practicalizing what we have told you, contact OZE. We work with them. They are partners. Contact us. We have our, we'll be talking about that next measures. Uh, you know, Frank and I will be discussing it so we can help you to, to do this. This is just part one, okay? Um, so um, in terms of uh, uh, IP, I mentioned in the food industry, there's possibilities of trade, uh, you know, trade secret, the, you know, registering your business. There's also, if it's like, um, I'm looking now to see the list we have. If you have any, if it's shoes, well, there's, no, you know, unless you're trying to produce or make a specific kind of shoe, whereby you're going to need to actually, it's in the area of technology where you might need to patent it or whatever, you know. And if it's creative industry, then you're thinking about copyright, you know, to protect it. Because when you protect it, then you, you can protect it and sue somebody who steals your knowledge because knowledge is very valuable. Right. And your product will increase the price that you request from customers to pay will be much higher. OK, so these are things that we do through our street law policy style training. We can help you because you are the masses. You are the the what I call the backbone of Africa's economy, period. There's no doubt about it. If you don't progress, forget about it. AFCFTA will not progress. That's just the bottom line. So we're here to help. OK, um, this is also tips on where to go, OK? But we'll share this with you further, OK? On the, on the, um, there are bodies in terms of, uh, uh, this was when we did the introductory. I know some people were interested in getting more information on how do we get money. So the Stanford Seed Fund, there's USAID Trade and Investment, Agoa Hobbs, there are three. One in West Africa, one in, the one in West Africa is now in Nigeria, it used to be in Ghana. There's one in East Africa and Kenya. And then the one in Southern Africa is in South Africa, right? They're sitting there. There's actually money waiting for people to tap into, but you have to be able to fill out the form. You have to be able to, you know, there's a lot for people in Africa. US um, uh, Africa Development Foundation, the current um, director whom I know and Frank knows, Travis, very good man, loves Africa, travels a lot, basically lives in Africa. I tell him, I say, I don't know, I saw him uh, last, uh, last weekend at a breakfast meeting during the summit. I say, you basically live in Africa, you love Africa a lot, but you have to qualify. Some of the problems are with respect to, in, not their problem because it's a procedural thing. The definition of SME in Africa is not the same with the West. So sometimes the collateral, they need to give you a grant so and a loan uh, combined is like 250, which is too high. So we're working on seeing how they can make it easier because of the devaluation of the currencies in Africa. Most SMEs are not able to qualify for some of the loans. So we're working towards that. There's going to be a conference um, in January through Albright Stonebridge. I met with the man um, at the breakfast meeting 
And I'm hoping you all will be involved. We are, not just me, my partner and I, will keep you abreast of this with Jose and uh, uh, Frank. We will be doing, so don't worry. You know, this is just the beginning, okay? There's just Soros, their foundations, and within Africa, um, I'm a coach for, for, uh, for um, uh, Tony Elumelu, but he's not the only foundation that provides uh, seed money or whatever for uh, SMEs. So it's boundless, Africsum too, an African Development Bank, but it's about knowing where to go. Information is power, okay? So with that, um, I think we can, uh, we, we, we're going to, and I think Winnie, you, you shared with them the list of the, in terms of the, the curriculum, the, um, the cur I wanna say curriculum, but the syllabus that we, we wanted to discuss. So what we did today, uh, Frank and I, where we, did, we did number one to seven with you, and we're going to do number 15, number eight to 14, part two, will expand, we'll go further, okay? We'll flesh it out further and we'll give you more detailed information, but we hope you have benefited to a certain extent and that you will benefit further because we're going to now go back to you. We started with you telling us who you are. We want to go around again to see how you think this can help, but let's go to the next measures because we have, as you can see, we have a lot in our slide because next time we'll be talking about AGOA, you know, the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act, we'll be discussing uh, tools for operationalizing meaningful trading for you, as you SMEs, okay, within AFCFT. What are the tools? We'll be also looking at the requirements of MANSA, the MANSA uh, platform, what they are, what the costs are for some people and no cost for some, Okay, most of you, if you don't want to do cost, but you can still benefit, even if you don't pay anything through the Mansa program that Africsum has, we'll also be looking at features and benefits of what they call the, the, um, the, um, the Pan-African uh, Payments and Settlement System. It's called PAPS, P-A-P-S-S. -S. Okay, very, very important system that you can capitalize on and put more money. It's all about putting more money in your pocket. We'll also be looking at the um, uh, trading, if you want to trade with uh, outside, beyond Africa, what the implications are for you. So uh, with that, uh, Frank, do you want to, on the next measures, and then we can, do we do first go around um, and find out, or Frank, you want to chime in? No, I'm happy to do it uh, any way that makes sense, Winnie, if you want to direct things. Uh, okay. We can talk about next measures now, or we can answer questions. We, we, let's do the next measures after the, they do the uh, questions uh, back and forth. So can we go okay, around? I think I see some things in the chat. Did they post questions? Winnie, how do we go from here in terms of interaction? Okay, um, so just people had just introduced themselves, so there are no questions in the chat yet. So if... People have questions. I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna go yeah, around. Yeah, okay, sure. Okay, look, Solis. I'm Solis, and my business name is this. I'm catering and uh, outlet into deco. Okay, she says she's an outlet. Can you post your questions if you're too shy, please? I'm or I'm just gonna start calling names. <laughs> uh, Kobena, you have I know you're in the jewelry business. You want to say something? Let me put my slide away. How do I get it out now? Uh, stop share, okay. okay. So this, this has been wonderful. I see we're 18 people uh, today and I'm sure we're gonna be much more. So we want to help you. So don't be shy. Throw your, Emilia. Oh, Emilia has something to say. Emilia, uh -huh. we're listening. Emilia is on the screen. Uh, I think it was Yahoo's hand was raised. So yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Yahoo. Sorry. Oh, Yahoo. Oh, Yahoo. Okay. Yahoo, please. Oh, we have Solace too. Okay. Yeah. Yahoo. Hello. Yes. Please, my name is Yah, not Yahoo. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no problem. Sorry, Yah. Um. My question is, uh, what are the platforms that provide interactions for uh, businesses across the AFCFTA zone to interact? 
That's so say I'm in question. Ghana, I have an opportunity. I'm looking for people from in the zone. What platforms mm -hmm. can I go to to reach out to these people? Thank you. Fantastic question. Uh, you know, um, you asked a question that will be touching, will be expansion on next uh, next session, which is going to be uh, in February, first week of February. It's exactly the Mansa, the Mansa platform. That's number, okay. Mansa is number nine and ten. We'll be we'll be discussing that I mean, uh, in I mean, the I mean, and we can actually help you to get on it because it's a form that you need to fill out, which you know, and then we'll give you information on what your options are because they have contributors status and they also have subscribers status. Right now, they have close to ten thousand uh, um, subscribe um, uh, contributors, and they have about five or so thousand in terms of SMEs. Right. We'll be giving you more information in uh, big first week in February as to the because I'm, we're actually in touch with them. OK, we have meetings with them. It's under the umbrella of Africsum, the Africa Export Import Bank. OK, so that's one platform. I mean, Frank, do you want to add? Hi, Frank. Frank. All right. I was muted. Uh, there are exchange programs that are listed in the AFCTA e-book manual that will give you a, a calendar of events where you can use them as a platform. Um, I can actually do a little bit of a lead into next steps because it ties into your question and it all centers around the African summit, uh, which as you know, was recently completed, but there was a lot of very encouraging statements from President Biden and the administration, including his trip to Africa and any presidential trip uh, to any country or continent, uh, it means that there will be initiatives announced by the administration. We may get advance word of that, in which case we will circulate it uh, to you through Winnie, but I would be expecting additional programs and platforms to be available as part of the Biden administration's re-engagement with Africa. Mm -hmm. And there are many, very good, Frank, and, and I think there are many more besides the Mansa, because even through the PAPS, you know, we, we will share that with you. Uh, yeah, you, it sounds like you want to jump in on that, right? Yeah. You're muted. Yes, um, okay. uh, since I'm looking for opportunities, so mine is running very quickly <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and it would be good to know too from you how big your your in terms of employees how many employees because even if you have market access you want to be able to meet demand you don't want to be in a situation where you have too few employees to meet the demands i found that with some of our clients in africa that when we give them that access then they're not able to meet demand because they have small economies of scale to, you know, it's not like China where you can have 1000 employees in an assembly line to produce shoes. You know, I know my brother, my brother produces shoes, Kwesi, you know, and even people, you know, those doing uh, food and different items or jewelry, you have to sort of capitalize on large economies of scale in terms of factors of production, you know, because when you're able to have a bigger number of people, you will produce the same product within a shorter space of time. You save that transaction cost, which is time, right? But we, we can discuss that a little bit more. I hope you can attend uh, part two, which will expose you more to this because we don't have enough time, you know. And then in the meantime, you can communicate with us, with Frank and I through Jose, more information before February, if it's an emergency that you want to do this before February. But we'll be doing our meet. We'll be giving you more information first week of February. Okay, I think um, somebody Another, wanted. To... Yes, Solis has a hand up. So Solis, Solis and I think Kwabena too. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Hi. Hello. Okay. Hi, Solis. We can hear you. Please go mm -hmm. ahead. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So I think my question has a little bit to do with Yas question. So just maybe adding on to her question as well. So um, talking about the trade in the zones and all that, I've had I've had stories where producers produce products and are exporting and then it gets to the other side of the country and has to be rejected because it's either unsafe for the market, pair their side or it's 
not consumable enough. Send them into food. I just wanted to know if there's some form of training or masterclass just like this where those into food or they're into processed goods go through to get to know maybe the packaging, the kind of um, preservatives to use that are accepted in other countries that or that are acceptable worldwide. Basically, that's my question. Hmm. That's a very good question. Now, Solace, you were not here earlier. What do you produce? What's the nature of your business? I don't see you listed as, I wrote down everybody's information. What do you produce at We're Curious? A catering enterprise. So I basically do culinary and then sugar craft. And sugar? Then, yes, please. You produce sugar? Sugar crafts, um, cake, advanced cakes and- Okay, um, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, but basically you're absolutely right. And I think that next we're going to be talking about Frank will be when we're discussing Agoa because there are requirements, sanitary requirements for um, Agoa, product quality standards that are required for products to be imported. Within Africa, there are rules too that have been put in place for uh, African nations to be able to export. So are you talking about access to markets within Africa or access to markets beyond Africa or just period? Access, being able to export cross-border trade, quality of meeting the standards within Africa or meeting standards beyond Africa? Solis. Well, since we are looking at Africa, I'll go to okay. Africa. I'm, yes. I am actually thinking of going beyond borders. So if that is an a dream that can be achieved, yes. I'll look at that expert okay. as well. Yes, we will discuss that uh, next because that's one of the, it's actually in the AFCFTA, okay? Countries set standards, but I will tell you that the standards within Africa are a little bit not as stringent as if you're exporting to the US. So, you know, if you have perishable goods, the easiest to export from my experience with my clients, spices are non-perishable. But we've had, not my client, but I know somebody who was importing into the US, yam, for instance, because it's perishable, it's more difficult. So if you're doing cakes, you're talking about exporting cakes, sugar crafts cakes, you said, do you have any non -per It's more difficult, the standards, the standards are not so much in terms of um, rejection of, or of the, the spice or what you're using because they respect the culture. You know, if, you're, if you want to export a product, jello rice, for instance, like Teresa Hines has trade secrets on our jello. You know that? But it's all dry. She puts it in, in a powdery form. You know, Teresa Hines is the wife of John Kerry. She's from Mozambique, but she's a white woman, white Mozambican. She got, she capitalized on this Ghana, Nigeria, African jollof. So she doesn't send the cooked jollof. She sends it in powdery form, like spice. They sell it at the markets here. You know, Heinz uh, tomato ketchup, she's the one, her father, her, you know, aristocratic, you know, she's from that ancestry. So she's, cap I know Africans were not happy she did it, but I'm like, duh, if we're sitting down, we're not registering, you know, food secret. Yeah. What do we expect? So sometimes it's about the way in which it's being packaged, you're right. So yes, we can do that in February. We can expose you because we don't have enough time to do that now. So very welcomed and it's a good idea because Frank, what do you think? I mean, this is part of the whole thing because even if within Africa, the requirements are there, like I said, but exporting to the US a little bit more stringent but yeah. don't concern yourself about the product itself. It's whether or not it's perishable or non-perishable. And also how many days are you going to leave it at the storage facility before it gets to the, 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 the stores? Sometimes it's left for so long and then it perishes before it gets to the consumers. So those are issues that we could easily tackle with you in first week of February. Frank, do you want to please address that? Yeah, I think that's precisely what uh, the AGOA program is and is designed to uh, facilitate and promote African exports to the United States. That's a whole separate topic that we don't have time to get into, but it's precisely the, uh, the program that will benefit your exports to the United States. Mm -hmm. And even within the Africa too, 
because Africa has similar provisions with AGOA provisions in terms of product quality. But I hope we've given you a little bit of information that you can hold on to pending when we do first week of February with Uze. What was going? Hmm? I'm sorry. Who's that? Is that Gabriel? Oh, that's Gabriel. Gabriel, we're listening. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. So tell us what. You, so does that answer for now, uh, so, uh, Soles? Soles, is, are you satisfied for now? Uh, yeah. The, okay. I'm yes. The liners. Okay. So Gabriel, yes, Gabriel. So you're. Oh, and also uh, Pabena. Yes. Pabena yes. and Albert. Can we have Gabriel first because he has not talked since? Yes, my we had issues was. before. So we'll have Kwabena because his line was, but just because his line may go off again. Kwabena, uh, yeah. you have good you have good reception, but Gabriel is up and down. So Gabriel, uh, let's yeah. hear you quickly, please. Yeah, I'm called Gabriel from Ghana, Kumasi. I'm into a great business, a livestock farming, a pigry and fishery. At the same time, I import uh Hair relaxes from Nigeria. Okay, that's good. What question do you have for us? Good. Uh, well, I mean, into listening. So when the time comes, I'll <laughs> ask. Uh, so I'm okay. done. So you do livestock? Uh, yes. What please. kind of livestock? Uh, Pigri and turkeys. What? Pigri, turkey, turkey. Turkey. Okay, so you yes. export it? No, right now I'm not doing export. I'm I sell within my vicinity. Okay, okay. I'm now trying to do export. Okay, okay. to other African countries. But, yes, because I do. I also do organic, organic. Uh, this thing, organic farming. Organic farming. Oh, I think that's what he said. Yeah, he got cut yes, off. Yes, he's gone off again. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, Gabriel, I, I'm glad you're there. Uh, Let's move to Kwabena. Kwabena. Oh, Gabriel. Okay, are you back? Yes, I'm back. Okay. Back. Okay. So, so you have you have you want to listen or you have questions at this stage? You froze again. Oh. Gabriel, for some reason, your product, your uh, thing is not working. Okay, uh, Kwabena, please. Someone, someone call with him. All right, Professor Val, uh, Frank Samolis, uh, Esquire, we really appreciate this presentation. I hope I can be heard I've, because I have a couple of questions right now. Yes, yes. Yes, All right, thank you very much for the presentations. I, I saw in the first part of uh, Frank's presentation that some nations have not signed on and <clears throat> because I saw a map and I saw that some nations have been signed on. That uh, was quite a, a sort of worry because I right. wanted to know if all African nations are covered. Then no, no, they've all worried. signed. Only Eritrea has not signed. Oh, okay, all right. Yes, 54 of the 55 have signed, but ratification... 40 plus have right. right. 40, I think it's 44. Yes, 44. Yes. Right, that's fine. Because uh, moving forward, we would like to cover all African countries with our products. And right. it's, it's a glad thing to realize that the market or the potential consumers is really huge and it is very heartwarming. But I want to ask this question um, and I would like to direct it to you, Professor Val. If I may go ahead, Prof. Yes, yes. Um, in as much as, as a creative business person, in as much as we would like to increase capacity and employ more, in the recent OSE survey, I placed three workers in my category. In as much as we want to employ more, I understand the economies of scale uh, analogy we're making. It all boils down to um, capacity of of, of, of capital, because the more you employ, the more you, you pay, the more salaries you pay. Because in Ghana, uh, that's why I also really want to talk about sole proprietorship, because if you register as a limited liability company in Ghana, you're going to pay taxes on workers, uh, you're going to pay social security on workers, 
Mm. And you can't engage a casual worker. So all your workers are sort of uh, formal workers and you have to pay all these things on them. But if we are moving towards the opportunity of marketing to the uh, African continental trade market space, then of course, we are talking about large capacity and large production, and which means that at that point, it will be easy to employ more hands uh, so that you'll be able to get into the scaled up um, zone that you were talking about. But in the meantime, before, for most SMEs like Gold Sense in the creative industry, we are not producing huge quantities of products. So if you employ them, they are going to sit down doing nothing. But when opportunity comes, like you have an order that you have to meet and supply to, let's say, um, a shop in Tanzania or Mauritius or wherever, there are a lot of hands to be employed. There are a lot of them. Sometimes myself, I even sublet certain things to uh, outsource to certain uh, staff, which I would have been able to employ if I have the capital capacity to employ. My last question, I want to also get to know more about um, the patent, because as a creative, uh, it becomes important to get certain things patented, and I was glad you mentioned it. So if you can throw more light on how uh, these things are done, I'll be glad. My other question is, I think I will hold on until February, because it's, it boils down to uh, other things that you mentioned you, you talk about in February. So for now, I, I really uh, want to get answers on these questions I asked. Thank you very much, Prof. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Uh, on the scale up, and you were uh, my understanding is you want to know how to deal with that challenge of scaling up. You know, I, um, I feel your pain because the, besides what we're doing, there's the regulatory side because we can't, it's not only us doing this training with you, but also with the government to sensitize them to easing the way you're doing your business. What is the ease of doing business, you know? And for me, for say Nigeria, I, with the World Bank and Nigeria community, where we look at the ease of doing business in Nigeria, they give feedback. So there's that regulatory side. Looking at the, the issue you're having with your um, being, you're a sole proprietorship, because yes. you were saying that, yeah, remember I mentioned that the sole proprietor is a fragility issue. Even for LLCs, I, I know that the in terms of the, the fees and everything, you know, you're talking about full time. There's also the option if you can't do full, because even here in this country, people can't afford, some businesses can't afford to scale up to hire more people, you know, even because of healthcare. Remember, they talked about Obamacare in this country. So sometimes what you can do, if you, you know, if I, I give you this $1,000 a minute uh, advice, the rules of the game, you could actually beat it by instead of doing full-time, hiring part-timers. So you could do um, a part-time whereby you find out what the rules are in, I think you're operating in Ghana, right? In Ghana. Yes. So you find out locally, right? What are the, I'm an, an African attorney, but I'm just telling you, you want to consult because we say that Frank and I are not giving legal advice on this training, this training is a masterclass training, even though we're qualified as attorneys, it's with my clients on the ground, I work with local attorneys, even though I'm an African attorney, because we do things together, but I can easily tell you quick that, you know, in terms of response, you want to do, beat it, find out what, how, what, how many hours do you need before you qualify as a full-time employee for your business, right? If you can switch, let me tell you, somebody like Bill Gates, I always give his example. I don't know, you know Microsoft, Bill Gates, yes. right? Yes. Guess where he started. Do, do, does Ghana have Kentucky Fried Chicken? KFC, yes. KFC is here. Uh -huh. Do you know Kentucky Fried Chicken was uh, uh, Con Connell Saunders? He was in yes, his 60s. That's right. I, I am aware of that. You know, he was making fried chicken and his neighbors liked it. He was just alone before yeah, he, exactly. he started as a franchise. super fighter franchise he grew bigger and bigger you know and now he sits in you know he's dead long gone but his business is booming that's in the food sector you're in the creative but still it doesn't you know you can expand but you can escape in the meantime charges by finding out what 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 is the definition of full-time employee right. so if it's like maybe 
40 hours a week, you hire maybe 20 hours a week right. so that you don't have to pay social security and the healthcare and all those things. That's one way that I would throw that out. Now, if you have, you said three employees, there's also a way in which, you, you know, I think you're outsourcing already. You, are yes. you supplying to Mauritius? Where are you supplying uh, your no, I was I was making an example that, for example- okay. it's, Currently, it's, you're inland. Exactly. You're not doing, okay. No, no currently, I, I supply to certain individuals outside uh, outside Ghana, but okay. it's, it's on individual basis, not in large quantities. Okay, to which Consider. countries? To Canada, to USA, to um, UK, oh, okay. uh, to Tanzania itself, to South Africa. You see, so you're Boston. doing that. Frank can even address that for you because really? one of the things, when you supply to the US, you're paying tariff. If you supply to US people, uh, customers, Frank, please tell him that. Tell him what will happen within the rubric of Agoa. Please tell him, Frank. I know you didn't ask Frank, but Frank is my partner and he's very wise too. Tell yeah. him what will happen in terms of duty free and all that. Because if you're doing it already, are they US? They're here in the US. And yeah, they're in the US. I have a product which is even going next week to California. Uh -huh. So can you tell him, Frank, what, what the implications? Well, that's something we'll do with Agoa, maybe when you come. But Frank can just give you a little bit of like, you know, like a movie where you're tempted to come back in February. Maybe Frank, you can give him a little bit of information on what the, you know, the Agoa thing. Or do you want to wait till February? Oh, you're not mute, you're, you have to unmute. Sorry about that. Uh, I can give you the short answer. We'll go into in depth in February, but Agoa is the African Growth and Opportunity Act, a specific African specific trade preference program that provides duty free treatment on goods exported from Africa to the United States. So it eliminates all the tariffs. Mm -hmm. um, there are requirements in terms of rules of origin, certificates of origin and so forth. But uh, if you can join our February meeting, we'll talk about how you qualify for a gold benefits. And that in and of itself will provide you huge cost savings mm -hmm. because you won't be paying any tariffs. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll do that uh, later. This, this is really a very interesting session because you know it's more money in your pocket as a trader we're talking about. You know, that's what we're talking about. So did I answer the copyright? You were talking about your business and- um, Patents. You asked jewelry. It's in yes. the area of jewelry patenting. Patent, that's right. So you're talking about procedures. There are local procedures in Ghana to follow, to do that. To, have you checked, out, checked it out at all? Um, no, I I heard of uh, a patent. Oh, I think I can find out. I, I can find out. Okay. I know a lawyer who mentioned it before, so I'll, we I'll can help that. you if you want help on that. We can because your area is in that area, obviously, for the uh, creative industries. Either you're copywriting something or you're patenting it. You know, it's it's the, you know, it's not a trade secret per se, unless it's food and you're doing some designs with your food like cake, and then that takes you into the creative stuff. So the transactional aspects of it, the whatever we can help you now, there are other opportunities to, to scale up, talking about, you know, beyond, you know, we can do that with you because it's very easy to work with a local lawyer to get you on board, right? right? Or if you, you know, to, to help you, uh, you know, and we can easily get that information even within the AFCFTA, what does the AFCFTA do to facilitate that process, right? right? Um, also, um, the benefits of that is the value of your jewelry increases, right? That's that's a good thing. You need to put the signature. You need to have it's it's a process. We can right. discuss that in more detail in right. the first week of February. We will incorporate that. What we will do with Jose is get some more questions so that we pay attention to them because this is supposed to be a street law policy style of training. We'll right. incorporate that into the answers we're going to give you first week in February. Right. expand on what we have discussed so that you can get you know we keep track of that now uh, in terms of the uh, scaling up there are other avenues to scaling up your business you could merge it's called mergers acquisitions the rules of the game within it's in the antitrust mergers acquisitions field where your company if there's another company that's also doing similar or they're doing something that sort of complements your business you you merge and they have maybe three employees it increases your uh, what they call um, um, uh, opportunities, 
comparative advantage out there, you know. You capitalize on each other's advantage. Maybe they're making, uh, you're doing uh, earrings and they're making necklaces or, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I but then the transactional aspect is where the lawyers come in. I've helped a client to merge with her mother's farm. I did that two months ago. She's in Nigeria. And she did it to be able to scale up so that she could meet the requirements of $250,000 grant loan that uh, US uh, Development Foundation, Africa Development Foundation was offering and other types of grants. So that is a possibility. The rules of the game in Ghana, because they regulate as you go that you need to go before. But I understand the, the issue that you're facing with the ease of doing business, which is what the World Bank and developed economies are working with African governments to ease that because all the taxing and the extra burdens are really, you know, suffocating SMEs. So that's a different angle, which the regulators, somebody's raising their hand. Ha, 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 are you satisfied with our answers for now? Yes, Prof, I am very satisfied, but your answer is, just led me to find out uh, further regards to Af African continental free trade. If we get an opportunity to supply, for example, to any country in, in Africa, are we talking about supplying to um, a shop or we are talking about supplying to an individual? It, it can be, Frank, you want to ask, it's either or, right, Frank? Yeah, it could be either one. I mean, it's trade. So, um, it doesn't matter if it's to an individual or to an organization or to a corporation. The, the AFCTA will apply. That's right. As long as you meet know, the mm -hmm. Absolutely. Somebody has their hand up. Albert. Uh, not Al Al You have your name as Albert, but it's yeah. 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 Hello. Um, that's Khadija, the founder of Oscar Lim Food Processing. Um, my question I'm sorry, is: who's, who's talking? Is it Yeah? That's Albert. Albert. That's Albert. Oh, Albert. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. that's Albert. Actually, the phone name is Albert, but I'm Khadija, the founder of Oscalim Food Processing. Um, okay. My question is: um, access to markets. It's a very big challenge. With my side, what we do is we are into food processing and because our product is organic. So we have our own farm that we trace from the farmland to the finished product. But the big challenge is access to market. So how do we get access to market into the AFCD? Okay, good question. Khadija, food processing of what? I know I listened to you. What do you process, please? Um, we, we, yeah, we process organic tea bag. That is from a plant called Teki Berry. In a local name, we call it Kwansusa or Abedu. We process it into a form of a tea bag. It's a plant that you don't plant it with a chemical. It comes by itself. So we process it into a tea bag because it doesn't sit for long periods. And others use it for um, soup. But we realize there's a bigger problem that is um, anemic. People have anemic. It solves anemic situation that is iron deficiency. And we realize the world, almost 2.7% of the world population have iron deficiency. So we thought of it and we decided to go into that, that, that project. So we have a farm we trace from the farmland to the finished product. Congratulations, that's awesome. Thank How you. many employees do you have? From the farm to from the farm to the factory, I have ten employees. I have How ten. many? Ten, ten. Okay, so you are that um, where they say because ninety eight percent is ten and uh, below, and two percent is more than ten. So you're where we expect in terms of the SME definitions in Africa. But that is still sort of a, a, a better cap than most SMEs. So you are supplying where now? As of now, we are supplying to some organic shops in Ghana. Some and where, where are you? Shops. Are you based in Ghana? I'm in, I'm in Ghana, Accra. I'm okay. in Ghana, Accra. So we supply to some of the organic shops in Accra and other places. But we are looking if we could get a market outside Ghana. We've sent some of our products to Nigeria recently. There was an exhibition. And we went there and realized there was a bit market. And we are looking at going to Rwanda if God permits next year. But okay. our challenge is access to markets. Okay. We will talk more about, it's similar, this access to market. 
We'll talk more next time. And your markets, you're looking regional or you're also looking to export? Because your products, it seems like it's not perishable. Yes, right? please. Yes, okay. it's not perishable. It's in the form of an infusion tea bag. So okay. it can okay. stay They're for easier, more than Non perishable. Yes. So we yes, can, please. when we're going to be in February, we'll be discussing this also, the, you know, there are different platforms. I mentioned the Mansa. Uh, Frank also yeah. talked about how to go into the E-Trade uh, uh, book, you know, the websites that it's the AU, uh, I said, the, I also gave you the, the office.accra at trade.gov. There's also the goods at AU, AFCFTA. There's the E-Tariff book, E-Tariff.AU dash AFCFTA. The Mansa platform will give you uh, some information on whether you know the details as to whether you want to be a contributor, a subscriber, how they can help you. They also the payment system. Oh, that payment system is very important. We will do it first week of February because it's more money in your pocket. It, it deals with all those bottlenecks you face in terms of the currency that they will pay you in and that you will pay if you're exporting or if you're importing a product. And if you also, I think, who's that? Lady has a question. Okay, somebody else has a question. Okay, so we will deal with that in February um, in more detail because your market, and but the market access too, before you delve into trying to export, you want to see, because one thing I've found with my clients is that even when they get, you have to make sure when you all uh, require, you know, you want to have market access, you want to know what your economic, your threshold is in terms of supply, the supply side, right? Quantity of products that you can supply to your customers on the demand side. So looking at the interaction between supply and demand, how much can, you don't want to sort of have access to market and not be able to meet demand. So you want to know the demand side too. What's your threshold on demand? What's your threshold on from a, from a supplier standpoint? Do, do, are you on, do you understand what I'm saying, Khadija? Because I have found clients who... Yes, please, I do. Find, and of yeah. course, the IFC, the International Finance Corporation, which I forgot to mention, they also have been to some of their meetings. They have um, a trade, so, something called Connect, which, but the thing with that is a different program from the, what we're talking about that Africsum has. But we will also discuss the IFC angle to things but really, we want you to focus on the Africsum one and the Agoa one with the US, but we'll give you more details because I've had clients, my company, we've had clients that they got the market access, but they couldn't meet demand because they could not capitalize on large economies or they were too small. So one of the things you will need to let us know in February, how many, how many of these spices do you produce per factor of production per labor. Does that make sense? Like if you have 10 employees, how many of these tea bags do you produce per day, per 10, per 10 units of labor production, right? Per day. What is your output per day? What can you feasibly meet in terms of access to market? Say if we we're engaged in transactions, you know, negotiating a deal with you with Nigeria to supply. Can you meet demand? And if so, how much of it can you meet quantity wise? Does that make sense? Because you don't want to have access and then you're stuck with not meeting demand in terms of Does that make sense? Yes, it makes. Yes, it makes sense. So, As of so, now, each of our staff is being able to process. Thousand tea bags in a day. How many? Thousand tea. Thousand tea bags. Thousand. Thousand tea bags in okay. a day. Okay. Yeah. And you're interested in um, accessing the U.S. market? Both U.S. and Africa. So we could we could do that, uh, Frank. We are going to crossing, and after that, if you want to engage our services to import into the U.S. We can we can do that. Okay. We can help and, you, but yeah, but you know we have fees for our services, 
right? So we'll have to decide the arrangement that we can do for you that will be affordable for your business. Frank, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, sorry. Um, yeah. yeah, we can cover that in more detail in February. I unfortunately have to run for 130. Oh, but um, I think we covered more than enough for this introductory session. And uh, Winnie will let you know when we will be meeting in February. And perhaps she can survey all of you and others as to what items you would like us to cover. And that way, yes. Yes. Uh, we've gone well over our hour allocated. Yes, you're space. right. It's like an hour and 30 minutes. Winnie, are you there? <laughs> I'm um, yeah. <laughs> yes. You know, I know we had so many questions. We have 16 people now. We had up to about 17, 18. Somebody's hand is still up. Is uh, Khadija oh, is still asking questions? I don't know. Somebody, uh, I don't know. I think she asked earlier. So okay. So yes, I, I think want yeah, her to so, ask a question. Yeah, lady. Was, yes. All right, so I wanted to ask that me being a small business now, and then I don't have a staff strength of 10, how do I get to meet the demand? Yes, we, this is what we've been talking about. We will, Frank and I can address this. This is what we'll be doing, the scaling up. You know, beyond this training, we can help you even under the umbrella of whatever arrangement we're, we're doing we're doing with the Jose. We have local partners, we're here. That's what we're about, to help you with scaling up. You know, we can safely summarize that at this meeting, we agreed that we're looking at business legal trade knowledge to help you scale up, have market access, have access to uh, finance, right? So this is basically in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing in February, right? And okay. it's not just re on a regional level, but even if you're looking, you know, futuristically, not just short term, but long term to come into the U.S. markets. And I know our brother uh, Kwabena is already in the U.S. market, so he's going to be needing help with how do I capitalize on making sure that because everybody wants more money in their pockets here. So that's what it's about. OK, so let so we're going to stop now. And I think, Frank, you've made your statement and I think um we will look to february 1st if you all commit to attending or oh, access to finance franchising okay i know there's no end come to our meeting in february first week if you all commit jose will be involved and we will do it so do we can we safely end now we've been with you for a while does that make yes. sense thank you that's, right. that's fine that's You're fine welcome. thank you so Take much everyone. Thank you.